Well, hi there, and welcome to another edition of What's the Word. I'm Tom Malone, joined by Brendan Duke and Johnny Ward this week for a little bit of a slimmed down panel. And what's been a pretty eventful week on the on the race in front? It's quite a lot going on. Poor old Denman passed. Uh, he did. You, you have a favourite Denman memory? Um, uh, it has to be the Gold Cup. You know, just winning the Gold Cup by seven lengths or whatever it was when. Uh, I think it might have been a performance that kind of broke him a bit, even though he came back and won the Hennessy. Um, he, he, he just gave everything that day. It was an aggressive ride in a tough race. And funny, my dad actually, he's only kind of a passing interest in horses, but he rang me yesterday reading about Denman's death. He's one of these guys that still reacts to news in the newspaper oh, okay. rather than on Twitter the day before or whatever. But he said, ah, oh, what a horse he was. And he started reeling off these memories. And I was like, he obviously left an impression. But I think... Denman and Koto Star at that time, they did an awful lot of racing. Yeah. They really did. And it didn't matter that they weren't trained in Ireland if you were an Irish racing fan. Everyone would embrace them. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have rival, isn't it? Someone compared it to like Ali and Fraser. Yeah. yeah, and just that they just were reminder, so different. Just a reminder, Star is Ali. And anyway, it was like you had like a kind of a French like aristocrat against like kind of like a French rugby player who took on like this Irish like brawler and uh, totally different types, but good buddies uh, at home by all accounts. Duke, do you have a favourite Denman moment? Yeah, no, that's an interesting comparison. I'll compare them. The one, one was a rapier and the other a claymore. But oh. uh, that, that, that performance in the Gold Cup when he took it up at halfway and it was pure claymore. What was it, like ruthless, remorseless? Yeah. Relentless. Relentless. Yeah, it was a great call as yeah. well, wasn't it? And he, took, I mean, he forced Cotto into mistakes. Yeah. That's, what, that's yeah. what he did. He just ratcheted up the pressure. Yeah. It was relentless, remorseless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, was, that was a serious performance. I actually, that, that would stand though. A horse dying doesn't doesn't affect me whatsoever no, because same. they all die. Like, I, I actually basically. felt bad he had for a good, Andrew he had a good Thornton. Life. Yeah, because he stole his thunder completely. Yeah, and he's still alive. Yeah, you know, he's like, still there. He still um, has to earn a crust. Like. Meanwhile, he gets on with life, and you know it's all about Denman, who's yeah, an eighteen-year-old horse. Ab absolutely, was. absolutely. I thought his thunder was uh, was completely stolen. Any other highlights of the week for you? You've been busy. Um, yeah, yeah, busy. Um, what day is it? <laughs> oh, it's kind of hard to know. Um, highlights of the week. Um, I, I, what do I have this week? Uh, been to a couple of football games. Got down to double header in Cork on Monday. The highlights of the week is probably the weather, actually. It's just yeah. been, I think everyone's in better form. It's a much better mm. form. Much Played better a bit form. of Astro last night. It was very, Roast very warm. But um, yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. Really enjoying it. And uh, um, you, just after you do a bit of exercise in weather like this, you know, you're just, you just feel great. Jiki, you've been enjoying some summer pursuits as well as your, your summer wardrobe. Well, as Johnny says, I mean, everyone is just in good form. Um, it's the greatest breast enhancer of all, the sun as well. And just the things people will do. Uh, I just rediscovered sea swimming, which, oh, I haven't yeah. really, which I haven't really done, despite the fact that I live by the sea. I was down in... Uh, <laughs> I was down in Dungarvan. Sorry, just to remind us, you live in South Dublin and you went to where, sea swimming? Dungarvan. Approximately a 150 <laughs> mile drive or so, 100 plus mile drive. Well, I was down there on, a, a, on okay, an away mission, okay. but um, I, I said, I'll go into my knees and then the, the surf was just lapping at my tummy. And I said, this isn't so bad at all. And I just dived in. Oh, it was invigorating. I'm a new man, Tom. Yeah, like, like a child. Well, like we, we spoke about the Damien English horses in Mornington Beach. Um, it's just something amazing about a nice morning on the beach yeah. and getting in the water. Yeah. And the horses can attest to it as well. But we, we can only um, wonder what his away mission was. Oh, uh, I was down playing Countdown. Uh, live as opposed to online. There's a, a, a community of uh, online countdowners and they like to get together every so often. Are you kidding? Countdowners, me? like one directioners. So you're, you're countdowners. Such you're with a bird or something. <laughs> Oh, and then I, and then I was, I was, uh, she, she, unbelievable gesture above and beyond. She went down to meet the countdowners as well. But then I met, went to meet her parents. So it was quid pro quo. That's right. Did you tell them while I, you were down there? A to meet her, B to do an, an online countdown. No, live, yes, and countdown. live countdown. And, and they, they didn't mention it again throughout the weekend. I <laughs> Unbelievably. Yeah. So there you go. I don't think they'll mention you again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We move on to the... Uh, let's move on what to are the we here to talk action. about? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't, think, I don't think that can be followed, to be perfectly honest. Anyway, there's a huge, uh, there's a huge pick six of the Curra on Saturday. Massive rollover. Uh, the Curra card, it's probably not the greatest card that's ever going to be run there all year. But uh, it's a huge pool. Would you, would you be tempted into the odd... Play of a pick six when a pool gets up like half a million or bigger. Yeah, I, I was just saying it to, to Juki before we came on. Like especially when they have all those guarantees in Galway and it spills over into like a Sligo meet maybe on the, the Monday or the Tuesday. Um, you're talking, you can just get a really big dividend here, and you know it it actually is winnable now. 
Juki has the tale of like, you know, we, we'll do such and such once we get to race four and then you're bomb out in the first. And yeah. that, that does happen. But I am a, I am a believer in dreaming big. Just okay. dream big. Don't be afraid to lose. Just want to win big. And you can at the court. You won't, <laughs> but you can at the court yeah, tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Jiggy, will you have a little play on that tomorrow? Or will you be looking to get involved in a syndicate or something? I'll be looking to get involved in any syndicate that will have me, Tom, uh, because if, no matter if you go out in the first leg, which does seem to happen an uncanny amount of times to the syndicates I'm involved in, you still had value with the overlay. So okay. uh, once I can say, oh, I had the value, then I don't mind. You're, you're you happy, also you're love happy. just going racing. <laughs> I do love yeah. car racing, yeah. yeah. Uh, every man needs a hobby, Johnny. Yeah. yeah and uh, I can't see swim every day. No, no. nor do Countdown is on every day, though, so you're set. No, true. Um, uh, let's move on to the actual main race of the day, the Curtis and McDonald's Bar, June Fest, Silver Stakes, listed contest over 10 furlongs and quick ground. Anything jumping out at you, Johnny? It's tough. Um, yeah. it, it really is tough. Um, uh, tentatively, Mustajir, he's very, yeah. very solid horse. I... I don't think there's a trainer whose horses I like backing more than Ger Lines. They just always seem to run their race. Yeah. I, I, I really like trainers who run their horses selectively because you kind of think he likes his strike rate here for whatever reason and he doesn't his like... His strike rate is excellent at the current yeah, level. Yeah, I think people, I think people notice more winners if, 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 there aren't, if they aren't kind of surrounded by the load of losers. So yeah. I think people, without even realising they know what the strike rate is, they, they will kind of know the fellow who's doing well with his strike rate. And Mustajir um, can enhance it, I think, on Saturday. Yeah, 10 He's not my nap of the day now. No, okay. That's 10 it. furlongs quick round is right up his street. Absolutely. Would you be with or against Mustajir, you fancy else? I, I probably should be with Mustajir because he is the top rated horse. This is, this is a pretty ordinary listed yeah. race. Um, and uh, as Johnny said, uh, Jer's just a solid citizen. The horse will almost certainly run his race. But he's basically a handicapper, isn't he? So I was looking at Theobald, who hasn't delivered on his early, uh, early two-year-old promise. But ran okay in the Irish Guineas. Shapes like the return to 10 furlongs might help him. And he'll, he'll probably be a price because, in fairness, there's people with singed fingers because of yeah. him. So I, I might just chance Theobald. Right, uh, on to Haydock. A couple of uh, pattern races at Haydock over the course of the afternoon. 250, it's the pinnacle stakes. Willie Mullins did have Law Girl in here, and I'd load him. Awesome Willie Mullins content to chat about. He but, did. Uh, she doesn't run now, so uh, God gave and tops the market. But uh, do you fancy anything in this? Will he hitting the 3,000 winners yeah, um, without much fanfare in Wexford, I think, the other night? Yeah, in Wexford, yeah. Um, and no doubt celebrate accordingly with a glass of army neck, which is his tipple. His tipple of choice, yeah. You actually have to buy it. It's <laughs> unfortunate because you're around for two people come to about 41 euro. Sound um, like, yeah, you've got burnt fingers in that one. I right? actually haven't. <laughs> um, but anyway... Um, this race, I don't like the favourite here. I think uh, God Given is vulnerable because I don't think the stable's in great form. She's in a Nathaniel Philly, her best form's in soft ground. Yeah. She hasn't won or come close to winning on what I imagine will be rattling quick ground at Haydock. Um, and I'd be very happy to take her on. If she takes on TT McPhee, who's actually double declared, she's declared in what's probably a softer race in Nottingham. Um, if she can take her on up front, that'll fall into the hands of Melano, who has a lot to find, but she's really consistent. She stays further. And she will love the ground, and she has first time cheek pieces, which might eke out a little bit of improvement. You can, you can tell that he's making what might be deemed an avaricious bid for black type here, but I think she actually has a bit of a chance. You fancy anything in the, uh, in the Pinnacle Stakes? Well, for the reasons uh, Johnny mentioned, I want to take on the Fab. And I thought the Cribs Causeway, yeah. highly progressive mare last season, decent comeback at York, and a race not really run to suit. I think the Macfield run here, so there should be a decent pace on. There's no reason why she couldn't progress again this season, and she really doesn't have to step up much to win here. So if, if you take the two highest rated out of the race, just on the premise that they may not run to form, there's nothing in this rate of three figures. So it's, it's, it could turn out to be a glorified listed race yeah. um, in terms of how it's actually run. Well, watch for the sales guides in the future then when they're yeah, yeah. Blank time. Was a glorified listed race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah the, the Goffs people will be on to yeah, it. Right, yeah. uh, right, let's move on to the uh, John O'Conn Stakes Group 3 contest as well at Haydock, uh, upcoming at 4 o'clock. Dutch Connection, assuming tops the market here. Quick round, seven furlongs, that's, that's his bag, isn't it? Yeah, he's a huge chance. Um, John of Gaunt, I'd love to know where that came from. Well, he, funny you should ask, he was the first Duke of Lancaster. John yeah. of, he presumably was a yeah. cadaverous f figure who... You know, yeah, exactly. He's a, yeah, anyway, there's one of the great lines like. on his Wikipedia. Wait for this. Due to his uh, royal ascendancy, advantageous marriages, and some generous land grants, he was one of the richest and most influential people in his era. We're, we're all looking for an advantageous marriage, aren't we? Yeah, there yeah. you go, there you, know, you go. So, uh, any marriage. Not but, exactly um, a fellow who <laughs> made it on his own. Yeah. Dubai is my selection anyway. Cool. Um, John of Gaunt will be happy to know. Um, 
this could be an advantageous venture to actually back this horse, who uh, obviously has tried a variety of trips. He's run the last few times behind the 10-man was fine, and I think maybe he might need a bit of time to reacclimatise. I've come back from Maidan where he ran two rock-solid races. Yeah. Wouldn't want this to be muddling is my only worry. You fancy Dutch Connection or you against Dutch Connection here? Muddling is a concern. Uh, the pace in the race is Muntadab. He's not going to be good enough. I thought Tabarak could sit second. I like Tabarak, generally reliable horse, except when I backed him in Doncaster <laughs> at the start of the season. But that was filthy ground, so he gets a pass for that. Um, likeable, consistent horse. He's only a couple of pounds behind Dutch Connection. I thought maybe form of his last win has worked out pretty well too. I thought maybe if he could just sit second, that might be enough to see him home. Good stuff. Anything else on Saturday? Jumping off the car, do you have a few bets for us on Saturday? Johnny? I'm very sweet on um, a horse of Tony Martins um, at the Curra, running in the... Two mile handy. Three... He's running in the... Have it here, sorry. If I Yeah, sorry, the 430, which is the PG Duffy and Sons Support Newbridge Handicap. Um, and actually, I must laud the Curra. Um, there's a lot of kind of local promoting local businesses tomorrow, which which is no harm at all. Yeah, part of June Fest. At part of June Ridge, Fest. Yeah. Um, I really like share the honour for Tony Martin. I loved yeah. his run at Leopard Sound the last day. And uh, he was a horse who was laced to make, I think he only started his career as a four-year-old, won at, on his debut. Wayne Lord and takes some mounts. Um, Harvey, as he's known, had a shocker of a year with his um, shocker of a season with his with his jumps horses, and he's actually become a more of a flat trainer now in a strange twist of fate. But this horse is a huge chance. I, I think there are a lot of dodgy characters in it. Yeah. Anything else on Saturday jumping out for you? And that's that's it. Uh, I like actually Verhoyen as well. He's a horse who would have been called a lot of names. Whoa. Um, yeah. Many of which we obviously can't repeat here. Although Duke, you did talk about was it breast enhancement? Yeah, so I guess maybe we can. But anyway, Brian, out of the handicap, he's going to be overpriced. I, I, I think he's a horse who's crying out for a good race um, to, to be able to sit off and use his natural speed. Yeah. And he could be, could be double figures. Yeah. Duke, anything for you on Saturday? Yes, well, I'm going to follow Johnny in. I was looking at that, that half four, and I really wanted to take on likely Fab Aret, who cannot be trusted. Oh, uh, cannot totally. be trusted. Uh, uh, With the jukester here. Yeah. He, he's, a, he's a best fresh angle. I couldn't find... And Lunt on the second, the last year behind him, was like, Aret's not going to do me. He never wins. Uh, well, back to the winner. But to that's be fair, Duke, tipped him up. Only when prompted. Uh, yeah, and uh, he's just he's the, he's, he's the ultimate BFA. So yeah. uh, we, we take him on second type. So I'll, I'll take him on with your horse because I couldn't find anything. That's great. And I do have a couple in the in Haydock, the 325, the Achilles Stakes. Uh, Muthmere is the favourite here. Not an easy horse to win with Muthmere. No. Granted, he keeps good company, but this sets up really well for judicial. It's a f f f quick track Haydock anyway. This should be run at a right strong pace. That's what he wants. Sit in behind. And I thought he was a knock at each way player. I could not see him out of the frame. So a chance him. And in the 340 at Newmarket, there's a horse running called Quilub. Oh, yeah. uh, a Hamdan horse. Um, he won, I think he won four of his five starts last season. The only one he was beaten on was his last one, but he ran into a right good horse that day. Uh, he's got a bit of an AF in the pedigree, so you think he'll continue to progress with age. And I thought he could start off with a win here tomorrow. Good stuff. Well, on to Sunday. And Sunday's a rather unique occasion in Ireland because it's one of the uh, blank days. So the stable staff have a day off. What, what should they do, Johnny? What, what would you recommend? How dare they have do? a day off? They should be like <laughs> servile kind of... Um, not seen, not heard, people who keep the whole game afloat and um, they deserve a lot more than a day off. And it, it smacks of tokenism. Two days in the whole sun. In the whole smacks summer. of tokenism, but um, I, I'd say a lot of them will, have, will be working anyway, like, you know, and, and getting an extra tenner maybe or something like that. It's a tough game out there. Yeah. Um, jet streaming for me at Nottingham in the, in the list race. We have a couple of double entries here, so yeah. watch your rule fours and all that. Um, I was actually at Galway when this horse won for. Um, Adrian Keatley um, has progressed markedly since then and uh, I think this is probably more of her trip she's been over a little bit further um, but she's banged there in ratings and she's a reliable enough filly um, tentative pick it's a race you, you want to be wary of the potential non -wise. yeah the non she rogues anything for you in that John, uh, Dukey looks like there's more cheap black type available here yes. doesn't there um, nothing strong at all company asset is the, the highest rated horse in the race so I'd, I'd, I'd go with that again progressive last year perfectly respectable comeback entitled to step up and probably doesn't have to step up much 
Good stuff. Right, well, Sunday's pretty much up. And anything on the uh, GAA or football front for you, maybe for Sunday or that? Yeah, I'm going Help with... these stables have to pay for their day out, their day off? I'm go yeah, um, I'm going with Bray Wanderers to beat... Um, it was my headline tip in the RP today. Uh, Bray Wanderers to beat Shamrock Rovers, 10 to 1 draw, no bet. And that means if it's a draw, you get your money back. Um, Shamrock Rovers have been a shambles for much of the season. They don't look mentally like they're all there. Yeah. Um, they conceded five goals and should have had at least one player sent off against Dundalk. Bray are not Dundalk, but Dundalk were not 10-1, to 1, draw no bet, and Bray actually won last weekend. They've already beaten Rovers this season. I can't say any more. No, that's fair enough. 10-1. to 1. Yeah. Good, good stuff. All right, let's get on to some of our best bets of the weekend, and of course multiples as well at Ladbrokes. Best odds guaranteed between 12 and 2 every day. So your best bet of the weekend. Juki, we'll start with you. That would be judicial in the 325 in Haydock, and I'll stick him in a Trixie with the 250 in Haydock, Cribs, Causeway, and the 340 in Newmarket, Quilloube. Cool. Johnny? Um, the nap would have to be share the honour. Um, the next best will be Bray. And for the purposes of an ambitious treble, the old Barra Fall in a flat race. La Trobe in the nightcap at the Curra. La Trobe in the nightcap at I mean, It's going to be short now, but it will win. Okay, don't Yeah, and if it don't win, Joseph O'Brien has a lot of explaining to do because he put this horse up as a big horse of the year. Yeah, Camelot absolutely. Horse. Turned over last time as well behind the Possibly the second or third there. highest Camelot rated horse so far, even though he hasn't won. Um, but lovely horse. Right, and I like uh, a mouse in that uh, four o'clock from Haydock. Also going to pop up Mustage here at the Curra in the uh, Silver Stakes and uh, Snow Star as well in the 320, that handicap sprint at the Curra on Saturday. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week for what's the